Hello, welcome to Old Chinese. Today I want to share with you a character, Xiang. You probably have learned it already, and um, but still I'm going to um, present you some new elements, and this hopefully will help you with learning Chinese characters, as they always have um, different layers of um, philosophical aspects connected to it, and um, some deeper meaning than it appears. Okay. So Xiang, and uh, you probably know it already that this is the upper down, up and down structure. Um, and the lower part is Xin Xin, yeah, the heart. Upper part is Xiang, Xiang, image, image. Yeah. So these are two characters, and um, as well as the meaning, take the some characters. Um, takes the meaning of one part and the sound of one part. But this character or and, and some of other part characters, they take the meaning of two parts and the sound of one part, which is this part. Yeah. So, um, and this part of course is means Xin the heart and this part means image, image. So the meaning of the whole character is to think as well to want. Yeah? This is a beginner level wanting. Beginner level wanting. There are different levels of wanting. Yeah? And um, um, Yao is a stronger level of wanting. And in English, um, Yao would be more... Um, I think the equivalent of Yao is would be to want, and um, Xiang would be the equivalent of I would like to get something. I would like, yeah, a very sort of you can make it more um, uh, sort of more polite if you're, you know, ordering something or um, anyway. It is it is the start of wanting yeah, and the start of this greater desire which follows on um, but this is the very beginning yeah we want to see as soon as possible we want to see as soon as possible but this is the very beginning of, of, of the desire of the wanting of the uh, is when the image appears on the heart yeah and the interesting thing is that with every single character you can break it down and you can learn uh, several different characters at one time. So I'm gonna break it down also a bit further. This part, Xiang, yeah, so it has two parts as well. The left part, Mu, Mu, yeah, the wood, the wood, or living things. Here it represents the meaning of living things. And uh, and Mu, the other side is the eye, the eye, yeah, and this, this Mu, both the same sound, Mu, Mu, yeah, Mu, and Mu. And also, uh, there is two things that I really want to talk about on this is that why is it chosen? Um, yeah, okay, it's image, of course, it, it's dependent on the eye, but why does it choose a wood? Is it, does it only the tree has the image and nothing else has the image? Uh, you probably wonder and according to Chinese philosophy and a lot of Eastern philosophy and the world is made out of um, four or five different elements and in Chinese tradition probably five elements Jin, Mu, Shui, Huo, Tu, Jin, Gold, Mu uh, Wood, Shui, Water, Huo, uh, Fire and Tu Huo fire to and earth yeah and according to maybe Indian philosophy it will be uh, air the air the earth the fire and the water four elements yeah so and um, they're very much similar uh, classification but um, with a little bit of variation yeah. so um, why does it choose wood? Um, because that the thing that we out of the four elements, yeah, the story behind that, out of five elements, um, the only this one is has a it means life, yeah, it's alive, yeah. So wood, 
or anything to do with life um, is this made out of this element mainly so um, and what we think about what we want most are things that are alive yeah and we want life as well the most than say what uh, I mean we we want water but the thing what we think about the most what we're concerned about the most that we appear in our mind the most are things that are alive like say uh, um, people yeah so rather than fire or water we think people much more or we think um, plants trees um, even animals much more than uh, we think um, unliving beings yeah. and also this um, very interesting thing about this is the modern way of writing Chinese modern which I mean the last 2000 years and this is before last before 2000 years um, and you can see the difference of Chinese character how they change in the, in the old times not about traditional I think traditional simplifies all the same this one um, in the old times people are more round yeah? so all the images are very round they have curves and I would assume that people at that time not because they can't draw things that's flat and vertical but because their character is very maybe they're, they're more soft they're more I don't know more round they're more connected because if you look if you look in the nature that a lot of things are curved and round it's not everything very straight of course there are straight things as well and um, and the wood yeah you see the, this interesting comparison this means means much more because this part going up this is the trunk of the of the tree the wood going up and this lower part it means the root the root of the of the plant yeah? and this eye also much more interesting yeah? it looks like a human eye <laughs> Um, rather than this one, nobody, even not Chinese, have square eyes, yeah, a rectangular eye, no. So, um, and this part, okay, it's very bad drawing, but the idea is this. Um, and this is also my question for you, um, the, uh, this means the heart, this is the original way of drawing the heart, and it means that the heart, emotional heart, yeah, not not physically a heart. This one is the physical heart. This one you can see that the difference and the changes. Um, this looks like a physical heart, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just like for me, like the drawing of the physical heart. But this has two meanings according to the description. That this means actually the heart that is hidden inside the body. Yeah, uh, and where? doesn't say and I cannot see I don't know it's very tricky yeah? if you have an idea where the heart is and how does this relate to sorry it's not a very beautiful drawing but something like this yeah? and okay I will I will upload another um, correct correct photo yeah so where is a heart hidden inside a body where where is the yeah. So this this is interesting because the heart is not just a heart, and the heart is the physical, is not just a physical heart. The heart originally the idea is is the mind, is the spiritual heart where it is. It's inside the body. Yeah. So it has two ideas, much deeper, a much deeper philosophical, um, Chinese philosophical um, idea than just you know the image of. The heart yeah so it's always connected and the last point is that I'm a big fan of Buddhist teaching uh, although 2,000 years ago there is still no Buddhist teaching in China um, but still I think uh, maybe some of the ideas were very similar at that time around the world um, I don't know and especially how that um, Buddhist was flourishing in China is probably because they have very similar 
um, philosophical ideas beforehand already about the universe, about the world, about life, about death, and then so they they can very much take you know they can very much incorporate um, Buddhism and Buddhism and Buddhist Buddhism was flourishing very much. Now it's not too much, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, the idea, okay, let's go back to this one, it's easier to see the modern one. Um, so the main teaching, one of the main teaching of um, Buddha's, Buddha is the dependent origination, that everything arises, yeah, arises independent of something else, nothing appears on its own. Yeah? And when, when those conditions, factors fail, then it changes. Yeah. So this is is nothing that is um is con is constant. Yeah. So nothing stays the same forever, from the gross level, big level. Yeah. What we can see, or from the very subtle level, what we can't see, moment to moment. Yeah. Um. That everything is changing because and not because of you want it or you don't want it to change. But it changes on its own, and this is central idea. And the dependent origination, also a Buddhist teaching about study of the mind, study of the mind, study of the six sense doors. And here is showing the the two teachings. See, the image, the image doesn't doesn't appear on its own. There is no image in the room or out there. Yeah? The image only appeared or the only image only arises when when there's two together. Yeah? So the object. The object is there. The object and the um, and the eyes and store. So two. Yeah? And three the contact when they're together. And then is when an image appears, when there's no this one or no this one or no contact, and either of them, and then there will be no image. Yeah. So okay, it's probably quite <laughs> obvious, but it has a deep, deep, um, uh, uh, deeper meaning than what it says. Buddhist teaching always sounds very, you know, isn't that obvious? But then we don't really see it. <laughs> okay, and the other more interesting part, the image. This is the same, yeah, the same. The image appears. Yeah, so the, there's the image, and there's the heart, the mind, the image, and the heart and mind. And when they contact, okay, because the sixth sense door, I know, um, ear, I know, ear, touch, tongue and mind, the mind, yeah, so this is the mind, this is a mental factor, yeah, an image. Yeah, when this image comes to, comes in contact with the mind is when desire happens, desire happens. Desire doesn't happen on your own, if you don't see it, you might not, you might not want it, yeah, or if you don't see it in your heart and then you can't want it. So this is also is um, very much it's very much interesting part. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, and also I'm going to make another very interesting video uh, following this one. Chinese character Wu, yeah, Wu is also very interesting and very Buddhist Buddhism minded like uh, coming up soon. So. Uh, subscribe and uh, or check out my uh, website oldchinese.com.au and uh, see you soon. Bye.